Today is February the 18th. What happens when we sin? Who's affected? Let's find out together as we study Judges chapter 9. To begin our study of Judges 9, the story of Abimelech, we need to start back in chapter 8, verse 29. Gideon's son of Joash returned home. He had 70 sons born to him, for he had many wives. He also had a concubine in Shechem who gave birth to a son whom he named Abimelech. Then Gideon died, and as soon as he died, Israel began worshiping again the god Baal, and they forgot the Lord their God. In chapter 9, one day Gideon's son Abimelech went to Shechem to visit his uncles, his mother's brothers. He said to them and the rest of his mother's family, ask the leading citizens of Shechem, whether they want to be ruled by all 70 of Gideon's sons or by one man. And remember, I'm your own flesh and blood. Well, the men of Shechem understood what Abimelech was saying. And so they chased out Gideon's sons and made Abimelech their king. In verse 6, all the leading citizens of Shechem and Beth Melo called a meeting under the oak beside the pillar at Shechem and made Abimelech their king. Abimelech, for his part, found all 70 of his half-brothers and killed them all on one stone. But in chapter 9, verse 5, the youngest brother, Jotham, escaped and hid. Abimelech's rule in Shechem was only about three years long, but fairly early, Jotham came out of hiding. And from verse 7 to 21, Jotham stands on Mount Gerizim, and he calls down to the city of Shechem, very close by. And he says to them a parable. He said, the trees got together and looked for a king for themselves. They went to the olive tree and said, you be king over us. But the olive tree said, I'm busy being productive. I make olive oil. I don't have time to be your king. So they went to the fig tree said, you be king over us. The fig tree said, I'm busy being productive. I have to grow figs. So the trees went to the grapevine and said, you be king over us. The grapevine said, I'm busy being productive. I don't have time to be your king. So finally the trees went to the thorn bushes said, you be our king. And the thorn bush said, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I am not productive at all. If you want me to be your king, come and lay in my shade. You ever lay in the shade of a thorn bush? It's not pleasant. <laughs> it's prickly. The thorn bush said, you truly want to make me your king, come and take shelter in my shade. And if not, let fire come out from me and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Well, Jotham got his point across. The sons of Gideon were good citizens. They were good productive people. The Abimelech, not so much. Now it's interesting. Abimelech's very name means my father is king. Um, he had desires for the kingship from the very day he was born, apparently. 
Well, in verse 22, after Abimelech had ruled over Israel for three years, he ruled in Shechem. God sent a spirit that stirred up trouble between Abimelech and the leading citizens of Shechem, and they revolted. So it didn't take the leaders of Shechem long to say, no, this guy isn't a good guy. He's not the one we want for our king. Verse 26, one day a man named Gaal, son of Ebed, moved to Shechem with his brothers. He gained the confidence of all the leading citizens of Shechem. During the annual harvest festival at Shechem, held in the temple of the local god, the wine flowed freely and everyone began cursing Abimelech. Who is Abimelech? Gaal shouted. He's not a true son of Shechem. Why should we be his servants? And he organizes a revolt against Abimelech. Abimelech comes in with his army and um, Gaal is defeated. From verse 26 to verse 41, Gaal dies in the battle. Abimelech is ruling. He goes back to Shechem, verse 42, the next day the people of Shechem went out into the fields to battle. When Abimelech heard about it, he attacked the people of Shechem, cut off the army from the city, defeated the army. Then he went to the city. They closed the gates. Now there were three ways to besiege a city that had impenetrable walls. One was you could wait them out. It took a long time. The second, you could build a ramp. Build it right up to the city walls and then you just cross over the city walls. That was a little bit less time than waiting it out, but it still took a long time. Abimelech took the third way. He gathered wood laid it against the city walls, and he set the city on fire. Now, the fire outside was big enough that it consumed the oxygen. The people inside died of smoke inhalation and asphyxiation. That way, Shechem fell. He went on to Thebes to do the very same thing he begins to burn that city, but look what happens in verse 52. Abimelech followed them to attack the tower, but as he prepared to set fire to the entrance, a woman on the roof dropped a millstone that landed on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. Abimelech didn't die, but he said to his sword bearer, run me through, I don't want it to be said that a woman killed me. Now a millstone would be a large stone about this big around, probably weighing 15 to 20 pounds. Um, it had a hole in the middle that you would set on another stone that had a post in it, and then it had a handle on the top. And you would pour wheat down the hole in the middle, turn it around, and flour would come out the sides. She took her millstone threw it over the side, hit Abimelech, and Abimelech died. Jotham's proper, uh, prophecy became true. A fire came out from Abimelech to burn Shechem, but also Abimelech died in that. What happens when we sin? It's easy to think that our sin affects us and only us, but it doesn't. It affects those around us as well. Sin sets in motion a series of events. Our sin affects those living around us. Let's be careful of our sin. Sin can destroy unity. Like, follow, subscribe, and share 
this devotional with your friends. If you have a question, email us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll see the next two judges to judge Israel.